This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and we're just about ready to get our forest system running in our game. However, before we do that, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. We haven't set anything up in our scene yet in terms of game objects or using our scriptable objects and things like that. So I do want to, in this video, jump back over to Unity and make sure that's all set up so we can see this in action. Now one thing we can do first is in our forest system script, we have our setup forest class declared and defined, but we need to actually call it. So in our start method of our forest system, we're going to call set up forest. And that is just going to create all of these holders and all of the um, different creatures that we want. Back in Unity, what we can do is we can create a new game object, just be an empty game object, and I'm gonna call this forest and I'm going to add to it our forest system component. Now we need to set up our profiles in here so we can go over to our profiles folder. And I'm gonna quickly lock the inspector here on the forest system just so I don't lose sight of these by accidentally double clicking or anything. I'm gonna drag the grass profile into the grass profile property there, rabbit into the rabbit profile, and we'll put wolf into the wolf profile. For our session settings, we need to say how much grass, rabbits, and wolves we're going to start with. So I'm going to say maybe we'll start with 20 grass, 10 rabbits, and 5 wolves. Again, because these are all public, we can manipulate these to kind of confirm what we want from them. We're not going to touch the session data because this is really just for us to view how things are going in the session. But with this done, we can actually see our scene in action. So we'll hit play. And by action, I mean we'll just really see the setup happening. What now happens, we see that, and sure enough, uh, grass count gets increased to 20, rabbit count to 10, wolf count to 5, and our forest creates each of its kind of holder objects, as well as all of the different instances of our rabbits, our wolves, and our grass. And you'll notice the grass, because it's not a consumer, just shows which number it is, which, you know, I am the... Uh, 13th grass to be created, so I'm grass 12 with the zero indexing. But for rabbits and wolves, which have this hunger, we see that hunger setting here, and they all start out with zero hunger, so they're ready to go. In order for this to kind of have more action, though, in order for our creatures to take action, we need to start having our scene and our system kind of progress forward as time progresses. And we're going to do that using a coroutine where every certain amount of time, in this case right now we're just saying every one second, we're going to tick forward one step in our system. So we can jump back into our forest system script here. And down below our setup forest and create unit, I'm actually going to delete our update script. We're not going to use update for this. We're going to specifically use the coroutine. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a coroutine that's going to be i enumerator, which is what coroutines always return. And then we're going to call this run game loop. And this is going to be a situation where we're just going to use a we're going to use a while loop. And we're just going to say while true in here right now, which is obviously dangerous to do sometimes, but it's a little bit better. You can get away with it more inside of a coroutine because you're not going to completely freeze your game on a frame. The, the game will still run frame by frame as long as you have in here a call that it should progress between loops from frame to frame to frame. What we can do in here is say what we want to happen inside the loop at each tick and then simply tell the coroutine to kind of pause for a moment, wait a number of frames equal to the amount of time that we set up in our uh, property up above for the time duration per tick. So how we'll do this is we're going to, first first thing I wanna do very simply, I just wanna see our ticks going up in this loop. So we'll say here, number of ticks in session, plus plus, and that's again our kind of session data property, the saying in this current session, we've been through this many ticks. So every time we go through a loop, we'll increase that by one. And then I'm going to do this yield statement. This is what's gonna say, okay, stop running the coroutine right now, but come back to it in a certain amount of time. So in this case, we'll use yield return new and what's called a wait for seconds, which is a type of um, way to suspend a coroutine, in this case for a number, given number of seconds. 
So we'll say wait for seconds, and then we'll pass in our duration, tick duration in seconds, which is that um, property we set up up here to say, you know, how long do we want? Do we want it to be every two seconds, every half a second, etc. So in this case, every one second, we'll come back to this coroutine and run a tick. Now we're going to be doing a lot more stuff in here in the future, but for right now, all this is supposed to do is get us one tick at a time so that we can see that this isn't just kind of setting up our forest and then you know, kind of stopping there, it's going to keep on running this game loop. What we do need to do, though, is to call this game, this uh, coroutine in the start method as well. So once we've set up our forest, we can then say start coroutine, and we'll say run game loop. And that will get us what we need. So now we can jump back to Unity and haven't don't have to change anything in here now. But now what we can do is we can hit play and we will see that not only do we set up our forest, but in our number of ticks per session, that begins to start clicking forward for us so that our game will progress. So with that in place, we can now start actually having our units do things based on these ticks happening, like getting more hungry, possibly multiplying or eating other things and actually making our system kind of interact, all these units in the system interact with one another to create this dynamic, lifelike environment. We'll do that in the next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.